Okay, next up is the 4100 series aluminum, or as we say here in Europe, aluminium. And we've got fine, medium, and coarse. This is a car that I've got completely based out in aluminium fine. I use aluminium fine if I'm replicating distressed metal. Medium and coarse, I would tend to use a little bit more when I'm laying down a ground coat for candies. And what I'm doing here is I'm just using the AutoWear masking film and laying it over the top and I'm starting to draw my design out. Now I've actually clear coated the aluminium fine. I tend not to do that, I tend to paint straight over. However, there are certain adhesion issues. It's not really designed for heavy masking and heavy stenciling. And in a case like this, a job like this where I'm going to spend over a hundred hours, I've just clear coated everything and now I'm cutting my design directly on top of the clear. I'm just weeding out the center of my design, the positive space, getting ready to spray. However, before I actually spray this, I'm going to cut out the rips in my design. The reason why I'm doing this is, as soon as I come in with my mini gun and start to spray over the top, I'm going to overspray on top of these, and I'll not be able to see my design. So I'm going to cut them now. I'm not actually going to weed them out, I'm simply cutting them out now, knowing that I'm not going to be able to see them shortly. I'm coming in now with a .8 spray gun, and this is deep black. Just two or three light coats is all I need for complete coverage. Taking care in the last coat there, obviously, not to get any paint creep or underspray. And once I've got that completely sprayed, I can now start to remove the masking. However, I'm still leaving the rips positively masked. I'm weeding out the entire background, but the rips are still completely masked. And now I'm coming in with my airbrush. Now I'm using a 0.3. It's not very detailed, so I could in theory use a 0.5 here. If I was using a 0.5, I would probably just use the transparent black straight out of the bottle maybe a little bit of 4011, but I'm using a 0.3, so I've got about 10 or 15% 4011 reducer in here. And I'm just starting to establish some shadows. I'm just removing the AutoWear masking film now and exposing the bare aluminium fine underneath, creating a contrast between foreground and background. And I'm back in now again with the transparent black, very slightly reduced. And I'm just starting to chisel away now starting to create shadows, starting to form up a little bit. As I say guys, it's not completely imperative that you clear coat over the aluminium bases. A lot of times I'll just put one or two light coats of transparent base over the top and work on. However, this project, I'm going to spend maybe 150, 200 hours on this complete car. And I really don't want to risk anything going wrong. So in this particular case, I've just clear coated everything, wet sanded it with 1000. You see, even with only 10 or 15% reducer, this paint is incredibly transparent. It's very, very refined. What that does is it let me build it up in stages and just build it up and build it up to receive, to achieve the desired effect I'm after. If I was using a semi-opaque here, it would be very unforgiving and I would reach coverage far too quickly. The transparents are much, much more forgiving. I 
Okay, I'm just coming in with my BFAST stencil now, and I'm still using transparent, in this case, transparent white. And all I'm doing is just catching the edges of the rips, just to give a little bit more contrast, make it stand out a little bit more. And again, this is transparent. The colour I'm using here is transparent root beer, it's my favourite colour. I use it for skin tones, I use it for wood, I use it in chrome. Uh, it's one of those paints that just seems to do everything. If I put it over aluminium fine, it looks like rust. So there we are guys, a couple of transparents over the top of the aluminium fine, ready for clear coating.